want to uh, call our July meeting to order. And if I could request uh, approval additions or corrections to the minutes of our last meeting, June 14th. I approved the uh, meeting minutes as uh, printed out. To put on file. Yes, please. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And it looks like we uh, don't have any action items. Um, so can we uh, move to the uh, line superintendent's report? Our safety report. Oh. Want to skip Sean? Sure. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's okay. I'm back here. I skipped him because he tells me he's not going to do anything all summer. That's what he told me. Oh, 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 that's, what the, that's what the report said. I think that was slightly misunderstood. <laughs> well, then provide me with clarification. Um, usually in the summer, uh, we, we take training down just so the crews can focus a little bit more on the bigger projects and usually have a lot more going on in the summer. So it's allowing them that time to not have to leave a work site, come in here, sit down for an hour, get back out there. It kind of really puts a break in their day. Um, so yeah, usually summers I just don't have training, but that doesn't mean that I'm not getting out there with the crews, kind of hanging out there a little bit, doing some inspections, working on program work, getting a lot of the boring stuff done, if you will, here, so I can be out there with the guys a little bit more. <coughs> so, it's still a good opportunity for training out on the site. Oh, it, it, exactly. it's basically making sure all the training that we're doing throughout the rest of the year is actually being, being done. used right. correctly. Yeah, so yeah, it's it, it works out nice. It's a good balance. It's a check and balance. It's a good balance. So. Very good. I stand corrected. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Or set <laughs> I set um, so, Josh, what do you have for us? <laughs> what would you like, I guess? <laughs> <laughs> Everything going all right? I think so, yeah. I wanted to know what communication lines failed. Uh, that's like Charter or Solaris, we get called in all the time for lines so, down. So it wasn't your problem at all? Uh, it's pretty regular. And the loud buzzing noise, is that um, the transformers when it gets muggy or something like that or what? Nobody knows. We, oh, okay. they, no one found anything. Okay. Probably a, something someone's hearing you know, <laughs> in their house or whatever. Well, I've gone, I've gone around once, you know, walking when it's really humid, and I hear them buzzing or whatever, and I called or whatever, and they said, oh, that's Yeah, the light bell is all buzz. You know, transformers don't make much noise. But. Okay. <laughs> Higher voltages, more humidity can yeah. cause that. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> so the water department operations report? Questions for Adam? Thanks for your response on my water leak. Yep. It's good to see your monitor in that. <laughs> so, summertime line breaks. Yeah, we, we typically get about four to five during the summer, and then we'll get on average eight to ten during the winter. So, it's just due to useful life the pipes wearing out. Yeah. So, it's you're not getting anything that's really related to the heat or anything? No. Our stress or... Did you have one over on Pepper? Our yes. recent one? Yep. Tenth and Tucker. It was on uh, Friday. Is that is that stretch a problem like it was on the other end? Yeah, that's that's being applied to the city's five year CIP plan. So they'll be going from well I've talked to Paul a little bit about it. It's gonna be Projected from eight to sixteen on that further. Okay. Tired of seeing Samson Street too. I think we have a lot of there. Yeah. Is it something with the pipe or the the, the age of the pipe? It's the age of the pipe. So certain certain ages of the pipe or certain years it was manufactured, we see more breaks during that time frame than other time frames. So uh, that. That one on Pepper Avenue, you're looking at 75 years old right there. So. Really? Yeah. 
So what what size of pipe can you line? What size of pipe can be lined? Line, yeah. Uh, lining is not really effective on distribution mains because okay. then you have to go through and you have to take a pot and then will have to core where all the corks are. Okay. So lining is effective on pipes where you're not going to have a lot of fittings and taps and stuff like that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, if you have a tap for a lot, that's not going to work. Yeah. Anything else, Rad? We move to the uh, customer support supervisor's report. Good to see the uh, numbers uh, coming in line um, for 60 and 90 day. Both look like improvements from previous years. They are, which is good. <clears throat> Any uh, feedback from the uh, landlord meeting? Um, I wasn't at the landlord meeting, so I don't know for sure what was discussed. I know Lynn said it was pretty positive. That relationship okay. has really gotten strong in the last couple of years, and um, her and Sarah do a really good job kind of dealing with the issues and talking with them about it. So That's really the mm -hmm. improvement. I take it that these letters that we sent out uh, telling folks that um, to 60 and 90 would be going to SDC, um, would that include these balances of 22 and 9 then that would actually be reported? Those would be the inactive, that 46. Um, it gets really hard to send current balances because you can't have two different people trying to collect the same debt. Um, so we normally go after that inactive debt with SDC and TRIP. Okay. Any other questions on this topic? Director of Finance Report? to be uh, cash flow positive. Yeah, that's good for another month. Any questions for Jeff? Well, I think you had asked if Jeff could find uh, follow up on some of the CDs and notes in their maturity dates, if there be a way to uh, replace some of those. I did talk to um, Ellers about that okay. um, last month, and um, they had one potential one that they would potentially recommend um, kind of calling or, you know, sure. selling at a loss and reinvesting the money, but it wasn't. The larger ones that we were initially thinking, just because of the the yield and the um, the difference between what we would earn if we'd reinvest that versus what we would get at market value was was pretty minimal. Jeff and I did discuss it, um, but there was only one out of the ones that they were looking at, and the the ones that were further out, just because their market value is so much lower, you're gonna have to make up that that fifty thousand dollar difference. Um, in earnings, future earnings to kind of make that up, but they didn't see much in the, the yield to maturities that is what they were looking at. So well, thanks for checking into what it was sure. worth checking into. Yeah, it's uh, good to see that local investment pool rate and the prevail rate. They're pretty competitive right now. Yeah. And, um, for this day there for a little while. Yeah, no, it's really hard to believe that what this one that's um, at point four five, so if you could roll that over to a five plus, that um, that wouldn't be beneficial. That matures in October. I think it was because of the shortness of how quick they mature. Yeah. Um, and then um, what they did, they, like I said, they did do an analysis of 
of our portfolio um, and was looking at everything. And that might have been the one that they recommended. There was one right in that, that time frame, but it was a minimal um, increase that we would see. Okay. Still better than what it's been in the last eight years. Yeah. Much Any other questions for the chair? Just looking at uh, any additional insights since last time on purchase power expense going going up. I mean, is that any indications of stabilization? I think from the from the purchase power bill, um, June um, was a little bit lower. Um, long term, I think I think MISO is a little bit lower this year than last year. MISO prices are lower, but most of our stuff now is locked in because it started to get away from us last year. So we did that deal with Dairy Land. I think I brought that up at the last mm -hmm. meeting, which kind of lets us have a known price. So it'll be about what we budgeted for this year, which is a more or less six seven percent increase from the prior year. Any other questions for Jeff? Not. Can we move on to the information systems? Matt, do we have all your parts now? I do. <laughs> Time to get going. Uh, we've only got. We had six switches to replace, oh, okay. and this is the, this was just for the last two. We already have four in place, okay, so okay. I've been knocking it out as as we got parts in. What do, you, what do you foresee for any upcoming projects? I mean, uh, is there something that needs to be looked at as maybe getting purchased sooner than later? Yeah, we don't have anything major um, on the project list. Uh, the one project that would have been a concern would have been the backup hardware, um, but I included that in the server upgrade, so we oh. don't need to do that next year. Okay. Thank any, you. Any concerns with that Chinese uh, Microsoft hack. Um, I was just reading about it this morning. I didn't get too far into it, but um, all of our stuff gets patched right away, so it's not not going to be a huge problem. That it's Office 365, I think, that they okay. were getting into, and we use standard Office. We okay. don't do the web version. Cisco for your network. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We're all Cisco on. Any other questions for Matt? The accounts conservation manager report. The collar club, is that the old Boys and Girls Club? That is correct. Yeah. Yep. Explain to me the relationship between time of day pricing and weekends versus no weekends. I, that went right over my head. Okay. So when a customer, customer has two options to be on a time of day or a regular rate, um, most residential customers are on a, a regular rate. So they get charged the same price per kilowatt hour, which is roughly 10 cents, 0 .0979 cents. When a customer, business, commercial, or residential goes to a time of day rate, they get charged two different rates. One charge is on peak, one is off. On peak is Monday through Friday, nine to nine, and it's charged at a higher rate. Let's say a residential customer would be 15 and a half cents a kilowatt hour. Come Friday evening at 9 p.m. until Monday morning at 9 a.m., that is all off peak hours, and they'd be charged five and a half cents a kilowatt hour. Um, and on the weekday, 9 p.m. till 9 a.m. in the morning, it's five and a half cents a kilowatt hour. So it's essentially half of what a regular residential customer is paying for a fixed charge. Okay. There'll be some adjustments to that in our rate case coming up. We 
Jeff, and at my insistence, push the PSC to make it less of a free rider, so to speak. Um, right now, they can probably not have to do anything and save a few dollars. Now they're going to have to at least shift the majority of their usage off to save money, which is the intent of the rate anyway, but the PSC has never driven down into the specifics. Yeah, so it's like that that twelve and a half percent. When I switched, especially with like the pool pump and stuff like that, I'm saving over twenty percent. But adjusting your usage, you have to. If you really are interested in saving money, you got to adjust your usage. Anything you can put on, like a timer, yeah, like irrigation. If you can run on and off peak hours, because yeah. those motors take such a large load, and that's where your your large amount of kilowatt hour comes from. When you can program that to go on like e-vehicles, perfect, at night, off peak hours, there's a huge savings attached there. Any other questions for John? Just one on Mariani, did you get any, um, are they doing anything in, yeah, I know they bought um, uh, the storage, Cold storage system, but are, are they doing any other additions or? There was discussion of it, but right now it's put on hold. Okay. Thank you. There no more questions for Sean, the electrical engineer's report. like some interesting troubleshooting, huh? Yeah, it'll really make sense. Were folks without power for a while while we were working on that, or you had a backup? Nope, we had it routed around, so it was okay. We got much hotter, we might have had a few issues, but mm -hmm. <laughs> not covered in this report. Yeah. Any other questions for Tyler? I just appreciate seeing those reports. It's a good learning opportunity for, for me as well. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it was a good learning opportunity for Tyler. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'd rather learn from someone else. More <laughs> mind, so. It's definitely helpful. Yeah. Okay, Director of Engineering and Electrical Operations Report. Um, any prognostication on the supply and demand situation? If there's any place in the supply chain that's looked like it's leveling out or anything? It does not look like it's leveling out. Everybody that I talk to keeps telling me there's no end in sight. So. Which is kind of strange because yeah, they're yeah. saying overall inflation prices are dropping. The numbers are expected yeah. to be even lower in early July, yeah. but <clears throat> we're not seeing it. Yeah. It could very well be that this is one of those typical things, you know. Everybody starts hedging, so that drives the, drives the system. Well, I'm sure people are ordering it earlier than they normally would yeah. so they can get it. And then Pretty soon, <coughs> there's a huge slack, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can remember sitting at the paper mill and seeing it happen. Yeah. You, you couldn't spy to save your soul to make people happy, and two months later, there was nothing coming in because suddenly everybody had built an inventory. Yeah. What dollar amount are you talking about increasing your inventory? I mean, are these big ticket items or big ticket items? So um, I want to buy a couple of reclosers, though I have asked for a quote three weeks ago. I'm still working to get that quote, but you're probably talking, I want to buy two of them, $35,000 each, so that's $70,000. Um, I talked a little bit about adding a transformer at Baker. That transformer is over a million dollars. Again, I don't have any quotes. So, yeah, big ticket items. So I mean, if we order them before the budget process, you'll be well informed of what we order and what it's going to cost. Okay, that was well, at least our initial estimate of what it's going to cost. 
Yeah, yeah. The quote isn't a quote anymore. It's a, this is what we think it'll cost you, um, but we'll we'll charge you what we feel it's worth at the time it ships. You know. So. Is the is the driver copper or what is the driver? Um, I think the driver for transformers is that um, core steel, which I talked about yeah. last month. Um, when it comes to some of these miscellaneous parts that I get from Alan Bradley. The driver is a company in Texas that makes the molded plastic for the parts is way behind schedule. So those parts are months out and um, that's evident. I ordered some molded case circuit breakers for the filter plant last July. They were supposed to be here by now and I got a email a week ago saying it's on back order still. So, so that's what they're telling me when we get there. Tyler ordered an overload piece for a starter something that used to be in stock. It took, what, Tyler, six weeks to get it? Maybe yeah, longer? Yes, yeah. the original estimate was two weeks. And, and they don't seem to have any idea what they're even telling you because they told Tyler it'll be here tomorrow, and then he did come, and then he thought, called them, and then they said, oh, it's, what, a month out, but then it came in two weeks. So they, they have no idea themselves where the parts are, so. Um, I think some of that is staffing, too, is Todd, I think, mentioned last week, too. I think a lot of them are having a hard time keeping employees as well. Yeah. Are you having the same issues on the water side? So I talked to our supply um, manager just last week to see what's out and what's not out. Um, they've seen some rebounding on the fittings and the pipe. However, they still said the, the brass fittings, which we use for our service connections, that's the corpse, curb stops, um, unions, all of those are over six months old. Do we have an adequate supply? We do for this year and then so for next year we'll probably be talking with them about ordering sometime this fall for this six month backlog on the, the brass items. So we may need to have a, a pre-budget right. budget discussion? Correct. Yeah. yeah. And Maybe the good or bad news is whatever I order won't be here for another year, so I guess uh, we won't be paying for it for a year. But yeah, just to get the purchase orders going, we might need the pre-budget meeting. Are we seeing uh, an accumulation of dollars committed to inventory? Inventory's increased. I mean, just not to have the materials in place, but the actual cost of each inventory item has increased. So. Um, in 2021, our ending inventory was like 1.4 to 1.6 million in the electric. And in 2022, it was just over 2 million, and I think right now we're at about 2.1 million. Um, so we're definitely higher um, this year. But again, it goes to um, delays in getting stuff and making sure we have the stuff we need in place for if we do get a storm or just to do our, our normal construction. Any other questions for Todd? Yeah, what's, what's driving the, the load on the delay? I don't know what's driving it, but we definitely are seeing it increase. Um, we typically only see like about 50 amps on our two feeders out there, and um, so 100 amps total, and we were pushing almost 300 amps during those real hot days. So I don't know if we just have um, more air conditioning load happening out there in the summer or what, but that was a little nuts. I, surprised to see it. And is that just this year or have you seen it starting? I haven't, I haven't seen it in the past. I mean I've always planned on adding a transformer there because it's the only location we have that only has one. Every other location has two and uh, we've just gotten by with the one and always have been able to refeed it from say the high school or the peep sub if we had to take that out of service. but. With that kind of load on a hot day, that would be almost impossible to add to an existing circuit. So it's pretty much time to, you know, go with another transformer out there. General Manager's report. Got cases all organized? Yeah, I mean, all of June they were doing saddle settlements with Manitowoc, and then they took over officially July 1st. So they were all prepared. 
Marshfield got the, <coughs> the metering, ITRON metering on time to do the members' billing, so they were able to get reads the first week in July. So that worked smoothly as well. So I think we're off to a good start. Anything you can uh, disclose about the city's interest in the land? Not other than at least they've picked a piece of property before they were looking at other wellhead protection. I think this is the one we prefer they look at just by the way things are laid out. Um, but then we haven't heard back from them since the initial meeting, so I don't know where they're at. And we did get talk to a realtor and get a preliminary valuation on it, and I don't know if they're going to like that either. So we'll have to see. I think they, just, they have a developer that's interested. Actually, they had a dozen developers in the town in town last week or the week before and toured some of these sites, but I know there was some interest in a piece of property that water and light owns. So. Yeah, I think that, that's part of the city's issue is they're just running out of property to develop, especially residentially. I think they have mm -hmm. sites available for commercial industrial, but not much residential development. I know we had Kyle Kearns uh, present we'll, to our... We'll work with him in any way we can, but we're not going to give away for free, I guess. Yeah, yeah. We had uh, Kyle Kearns uh, give a presentation to our Rotary Club a couple weeks ago, and he was talking about how the four new businesses going in the old shop co is generating interest among other developers, you know, seeing that taking place. So I think they had, I don't, um, there's a group out of Wausau that put something together and these developers toured, toured Marshfield and Rapids, I think it was last week, and uh, got some good feedback, I guess, and some interest in, we've got to start somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. So this piece of land uh, behind Walmart is not, um, Risking any of our wells? No. No, I mean with the development. Go ahead. Um, that that wasn't actually purchased for wellhead protection. That's actually where our old well systems used to be located, prior to the collector wells being built in the 40s. So that's that's something that's actually out of our time of travel for our well. All our wells pull from the northeast, so that's actually south of those wells. So it has zero impact on it. Plus, they would plan to use city water and sewers. So it wouldn't have any impact on, mm -hmm. on water quality. Okay. And how big is that parcel? 40? It's a little, little shy of 40 acres. Okay. So that's our back 40. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions for Jim? Not uh, review of accounts payable. I think we had talked um, previously, I don't know, sometime ago about interest in 5G on some of our poles. Mm -hmm. That is that interest kind of way, or where does that sit? Um, we <laughs> had discussion last year with U.S. Cellular, and that just kind of died. Okay. I mean, we sent them the agreement that yeah. we had, and it really didn't go anywhere at this okay. point. So I don't know if they're doing their own towers, because I know there's 5G in town. Okay. So I don't know if some of those pop-up towers are their towers, or you know, what's going on. But we, haven't, we don't have any 5G equipment on our poles. Okay. We did one markup of the agreement, and then it kind of died. One of their attorneys resigned or went somewhere else, and it's been a dead hole ever since. And I think it was just to set up repeaters to help their signals in certain parts of town where they have a slow, bad signal, like near my house. I get like no bars. It's all yeah. Yeah. Well, there's plenty of bars downtown. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> Well, not just too far in this town, I guess, huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> Did we ever get that 500000 yet back in the blue or not?
there are no more questions, accounts payable, I would entertain a motion for adjournment.